The Sharp Tank. No jumper. <laughs> Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. Speak on it. <laughs> and today, we're going to do the Vegas edition. This is a special edition. Oh, man, it's beautiful in Vegas. It's, <laughs> this is a special edition. Beautiful out here. I got motherfucking wallow for million dollars worth listen, of man, game this, in the listen, building. Man, Shark right here, man. Me and him reconnected, you know. Right today, you know, we've been connected for a while, but I said, man, when the time is right, we're going to make it happen. It was, and I still too. my word. My word is my rep. Your word is uh, your rep. Always reaching out to this brother. We, we just build, man. It ain't, it ain't, see, a lot of people, you know, everything got to be online. No, we build offline. Right. And there was some real live brotherhood, you know what I mean? Some fellowshipping. Yeah. And uh, I'm right here, man. Yeah. On a shark tank. No jumpers. <laughs> it's going down, baby. We ready to get busy. So I'm a, my, my first question, I got to know, because I want to know, Wallow, before the lights and the camera, mm -hmm. Wallow that did the twenty years. Oh, that was just, you know I just was a young nigga trying to have things out here. You yeah. know you young, you trying to have things. You 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 know you know how it is in the ghetto. You got to have things in order to be accepted. You don't yeah. know who you are. Identity crisis. Right. One day you want to be a, you know a gambler. One day you want to be a pimp. Yeah. One day you want to be a dope dealer. You know what I mean. One day you want to be a thief. You don't know. So you yeah. just trying to figure yourself out, and you just out here you know trying to get some paper, man. So you got. Uh, so the people could fuck with you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's what I was doing, man. I ain't know, I ain't know what was going on, man. You know, but right. in my environment, that's what people was doing. You know, in order to get the most beautiful girl in the neighborhood, you had to get some money because when you know the older cats was pulling up and they Benzes or you know they Cadillacs, uh -huh. they had some money. Right. That's what I always saw. And and, and the people in the, in the hood, they had admiration for them. Even the older ladies, when when main man pulled up to come get the beautiful girl in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, the old ladies, everybody in the neighborhood looked at that person with an admiration and respect because, you know, we live in America. Everybody respects a successful criminal. Yeah. So you get some money, you, you know. Why do you think that uh, they always try to frown on the people that might be? And and I I, I got to say, like, they try to frown on people that sell drugs or have pimped or have done things like that. You know, it's always been them guys I've always seen look out for the neighborhood. No, you know what it is? Uh, that's fashionable. That's just you know, they only they only frown on people when when they ain't around them or when they fall. Yeah, America is built on crime. Yeah, crime fuel America. Always. Uh, the economy is a lot of illegal money in the economy. Um, you need prisons. You need police officers. You need parole officers. You need correctional officers. It's a big business. Yeah. But everybody's unemployed if crime stop. Yeah, I was on uh, I was on paperwork one time. I had to do a, a little five-year paperwork joint where, you know, they come checking in my house and doing shit like that. And I'll never forget this this pro, this probation officer because I was on probation. You know, I did four years, five yeah. years probation. And I remember he came to my house, and um, he walked in, you know, uh, admirable, admirable white man. You know, I'd say they, I could just tell, you know, he mm -hmm. wears his morals on his, on his shoulder. You know, he walked in, you know, I had a big ass house. You know what I'm saying? I had a house with fucking downstairs movie theater, all this shit, man. And he walked in and he looked around and he looked at me and he told me, why you got all this house for? I said, what if, what if this is something that I just, uh, I, what if this is how I want to live? But I had to think about it for a second, right? I had to really think about it, you know, it's because he's about to probably go back home to a smaller home or he an might apartment be, he with might problems. Be by he, he might be having, you know, but I always notice that they'll, they, they look at us like that. They frown. Why do you got all this? Why can't I have it? Why am I not allowed to have what you have? Yeah. It makes no sense to me. You know, seeing you do 20 years church, what was your before? Because obviously you didn't think about doing any type because you're an influencer, man. You influence. Mm -hmm. I've watched you do things. You are you're an advocate to a lot of things and trying to help the black yeah. community or just the community. At community all. Just period. Community period. You know, what was was this your uh, was this your ideal dream right here to do this? I always was helping out? dudes, man, even in prison, man. So it was like it was just natural to me, man. Just, you know, share the word, man. Yeah. I think everybody got everybody got a word to share. Yeah. You go get with a mechanic, he got a word to share about fixing cars. Right, right. Uh, I had words to share about just my knowledge of the street game. Yeah. Uh, how, 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 you know, it ain't get me nowhere. Yeah. Different things, you know. So I just like, I said, man, anybody can share their knowledge, and that's what I did. Right. You know, and, you know, a lot of times we don't have a 100% idea of what we're going to do. We just do shit. Yeah. And it turned out, you know what I mean? Because we had, we might get some money in one area. And we're like, this is my thing, this is my calling. Yeah. 
And then we go to another area or we fall messing with that area, especially if we was on some street shit. And then we find our true calling. We'll walk into that shit. And this is my call to helping people. Do you feel like you've always been good at anything you've ever set your mind to? No, I always got locked up when I was, you stick up shit. I never, I never <laughs> so I wasn't that good. I remember my homie mom said, she said, you, she said, you niggas, she said, uh, you know, y'all don't know how to do wrong right. Y'all need to start learning how to do right right. I and that was she, what she meant by that. She, she said, we didn't know how to do wrong right. We always got caught up. She said, so y'all need to start <laughs> learning how to do right right. Because y'all don't know how to do wrong right. You know what I mean? So right. it was like, damn, that was me. And I used to remember that in the prison. I was like, man, I got to switch my game up. Because I always was a, a person that knew how to communicate. I was a great communicator. I knew how to talk to people. Yeah. So, you know, only thing I did is, you know, out here, and what I do most of the time, I tell people what they already heard in their life from somebody in their life, but the delivery and the way they deliver it to them, it wasn't digestible enough. So right. I, I give them something, you know. So that's all I be doing. Yeah. You know? 20 years in, in that motherfucker, man, had is pure hell to do 20 years, you know? I, I You know, I heard somebody say, and I got to speak on it, man, because I want to hear your opinion. I heard somebody say today, man, I was watching a podcast, and I heard somebody say that, we can't respect somebody who went and did, you know, went and did years for selling drugs or robbing or anything like that. They feel like that they could never really adapt back to society and that they should still be frowned upon. What do you think of that? Well, you know, in America, they say they believe in second chances and they believe in rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody deserves their shot once they walk out of the can. Right. Uh, and a lot of things be based off people reference point. Whoever said that. You don't know their reference points. You don't know their life. And have they ever did some time? Right. Like, like you know, it's, it, you know what would be so crazy? It's not even about the time thing. I don't care who you is in this world. Everybody done broke the law some type of way. Hmm. Whether it's going through a red light, whether it's taking something out of store that you wasn't supposed to. Come on, man. We human beings. Ain't nobody perfect. We break laws without even knowing we breaking laws sometimes. So... You gotta, you, you know, sometimes you gotta, you, you, you gotta really pay attention to where the, you know, the pain is coming from. Yeah. And you can't take anything so personal, man. Yeah. Based off of people reference points and where they come from <laughs> in life, they might look look down on certain things, and the people got the right to. Yeah. You know, but me, I was the type of person that is though, I don't care how you looked at me. I know I'm gonna keep doing what I gotta do. Yeah. And that's I mean, all I, I have to agree with you because I've seen rich people that be klepto. They steal and don't even Come got no reason. Take all the towels out of the don't, and don't even got no reason to steal. Got all the money in the world. Take you all know, the and towels I, out I of watched them just the walk into the, the Winona Ryder chick. Man, got money. Shoplifting. I, I never really understood that, man. You know, when I was still. probably like the danger of it. When I was, maybe. But when I, I was, was still and I was broke. I was fucked up. You know what I'm saying, man? And like, it really pushed me. I felt like I was going against my moral to steal. Like, cause I didn't want to be no person that had to thieve. I'm young, I'm, I'm a baby, man, you know? But I'm hungry. Smoking a little bit of weed, I'm high. I'm, I got the munchies, I'm hungry. Yeah, I ain't really ate yeah. that day. So it makes you even hungrier, man. I'll never forget sitting back, man. And just one day in my grandma's house, man, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm stoned. She ain't really got the food or the money to feed me, man. I just remember sitting there crying. Remember, and, I was, and she heard me, and she was like, hey, come here, come talk to me. And I went in there, and I talked to her for a second, but when I came out of the room, I didn't even tell her what was wrong with me. I just said to myself that day, I'll never be broke again. Mm. I'll never be broke again, and I promise you, loved one, I've never been broke again. I don't give a fuck. I at least keep a dollar for a phone call. That's all it's about. You ain't broke. <laughs> NBA. Never broke again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Manscaped product alert. You ask for it, and they listen. Our friends at Manscaped just brought back the ultra smooth package. It's time to stop, drop, and order this premium shaving kit. Everyone knows by now that the Lawnmower 4.0 is the best electric shaving for your balls. <laughs> but if you're looking for a closer shave to go bare down there, there's an ultra smooth package that is a perfect set. It's time to shave that bush of yours. Get right to the roots with a discount just for you. Get 20% off free shipping at manscaped.com with the code SHARPTANK. That's 20% off with the code SHARPTANK at manscaped.com. The Manscaped Ultra Smooth Package is a three-step kit to make your package the perfect package. Exfoliate, gel, and shave. But first, you'll want to grab your handy lawnmower 4.0 and give your boys the classic trim to your liking to get those loose hairs out of the way. Step one, crop exfoliator. 
infused with our ingredients that can soothe, clear, and keep the skin on and around your growing feeling fresh. The crop exfoliator can help reduce the risk of ingrown hairs and those delicate places. Step two, crop gel. See where you're shaving with the unique clear shaving gel just for the growing. Step three, it's time to shave. The Crop Shaver was designed for shaving that growing area with confidence. This razor has a three precision blade that includes extra wide lubricating strips and pivoting head for that ultimate growing grooming experience. Get 20% off with free shipping at the code SHARPTANK at manscaped.com. That's 20% free shipping with the code SHARPTANK at manscaped.com. Smooth out your fellas with the relaunch ultra smooth package from the fellas at Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. How is it? How has it been for you? Because I see that you working with YouTube now. Yeah, how I'm is that, How has that been being an advisor, man? A black one at that. Black advisor for YouTube. Shout out to Leroy Corn for giving me a shot. Tuma, Tuma, uh, you know, Bossa. Just yeah. understanding. Uh, everybody got a shout out here, man. You just got to apply yourself, and you got to get out here and get some motion, man. Get some traction. A lot of people don't understand, you know, just because you was in a messed up situation that you can't count yourself out. A lot of times, the system, you know, they have an idea of who they who they want to give entry to certain people, places, and things. But we have an idea too, and sometimes we are, you know, we are count ourselves out like the system, not even knowing. Like, no, all I gotta do is get out here and put the work in. Mm -hmm. And every door I need to open, everybody want to deal with a winner, man. Everybody want to deal with a star. They don't give a fuck even how fucked up it is. They don't give a fuck. They don't even give a fuck how fucked up it is. They want to deal with a winner crazy. and a star. Facts. All you got to do is get out here, get some motion, get some traction, and people going to come kick it with you. Prime example, you go ahead, you jump up on a, the interview, mm -hmm. do numbers, you get popping, now everybody want to fuck with you. Other than that, they you was just doing your thing. You were sharp over here doing your thing. Very Nobody true. knew what was going on. You know what I mean? Very so true. you get on there, share some game, you know, and look. You, oh, man, that people was trying to hit you up there. Yeah. They love it, man. All you got to do is put the work in. They coming. Yeah. They're coming. Everybody's going to come. How did you land a job like that with you two? It like, ain't a job. I'm a advisor. Yeah. I don't, you know what I well, mean? Yeah, I guess it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't work with, you know what I mean? I, I advise them on this program that we do because we wanted to put a program together, you know, and uh, what really happened, what's the name wanted to send me to Colton School, Leo Cohen. He was like, you want to go? I said, no, I ain't with that. That ain't my thing. He said, I respect that. I said, man, you know, and uh, maybe something else I could do. And that's how I came about. Yeah. So, you know. You've definitely got uh, the gift to gab is what I call it. Okay, from, yeah. from my game, like you, you know what, and you know what head, you're talking up. about. Like yeah. you, you seem like the type of person that you, you understand that there's a million ways out of a chokehold. You just got to find one. Mm -hmm. And I've watched you get out of a chokehold, love one of just – being somebody who I've watched you influence, I've watched you step out, even come out to Vegas, man. They got you doing the fucking recession proof convention. Yes, like, man. man you're shout out to the, him finally. Yeah. You're on the flyer. Yeah. You and Gilly this, are on the this flyer. This is my second time. Doing this is your second time. We did it in Miami it. when we interviewed Floyd Mayweather. How was that? It was outstanding, man. Like, it is a bunch of good, good people that's educating the hood, man, and putting them on game, on business. So I, I love it. Yeah. And, you know, that's what that shit is about. Yeah. Do you feel like, because to me, man, I, you know, I think that a lot of people be afraid of doing something, throwing something like that for the black culture because they feel like that they're not going to listen anyway. Like why, Shit. you know, when you see like, a, and no offense to him, but like a Tony Robbins, I think his name is, mm -hmm. you know, you, you see people like that. Are they more willing to go and do something like that for the black community? Like, hey, we're going to do a something like a recession proof convention to where, you know, we invite, you know, we, we want all the black men and women. It's not going to happen. They're not going to go. Why not? They does not, man. You can't speak, you can't, listen, you gotta understand there's something very important. You can't teach what you don't know and you can't lead when you don't go. Hmm. Say it again for the- You can't teach what you don't know and you can't lead when you don't go. Right. I'm able to connect, all, all the ghetto's the same, different name. I'm able to go here from wherever I'm in the Bay, wherever I'm in Cali in LA, hmm. wherever I'm in a, a Harlem, wherever I'm in Atlanta, Detroit, Baltimore. I'm able to go to these places because I connect with the people. I speak the language and I wear the uniform of our environment. Yeah. So I'm able to go to all these places. So, you know, yeah. it is what it is. What's your, uh, the relationship with you and Gilly? Because that's my I, cousin, I, man. I, yeah, obviously, no, you guys are cousins, but yeah. it just seems like y'all are really that's in like tune that, that, with that, each that, other. That, you know, that's like my big brother. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, that's what makes it so tight. And uh, we always been game tight, man. And yeah. uh, that's why you, when you see it, it ain't, we ain't got to, we ain't running off, we ain't not reading off no script. We doing right. this thing for real. Right. So yeah. that's what it's all about. I see uh, you do it, because I, I love Gilly, man. And I, I love y'all relationship, you know, even being family members, because y'all act like family members. Y'all don't just act, you know, I've never seen y'all act like business partners. Fuck no. You know what I'm saying? Nothing that y'all do in any type of video that you post with him. I've watched you drawstring him hundred times yeah. I've watched you really fuck with that man like yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah, so I, I've watched y'all really have a, a a close relationship man you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. seems like he was I seen a couple pictures of y'all back and they used to come visit you in the pen yeah yeah definitely come check me out you leave know? money on your books all that stuff uh, uh bring uh Ving Rames up different people up to see me yeah all types of shit man so Damn. you know how was that experience? Vin man. Rams coming up to the pink thigh. Come man, see Vin, you. Vin gave me kick it with me, man. It was it was live, man. Yeah. You know, he took a break off. He was shooting Mission Impossible. He was like, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come up there because I was I used to holler at him on the phone with Gil. Yeah. And he came up one day, man. I was working in the kitchen. They called me, yo, you got a visit. Went down there, Vink was in the joint. I'm like, damn, this baby boy. You didn't boy. even expect that. No, I didn't know who was coming that day, and it was them. I'm yeah. like, damn, this baby boy. You know? Damn. And so, you know. Yeah. That was a blessing. He came and sprinkled some game on me. Little Steve, oh man, you know that you know that that that's the motivation for all this shit, and it, and it's crazy. I was just when I was at the convention, I was talking to one of the homeboys that knew my brother. He was like, he was telling me about the one of the last time he seen him because I was in the penitentiary when he died, uh, and we were just kick, cracking up because he was, he was like, just some, yo, he was like, him and Gil is sort of like the same. They crazy. They gonna speak their mind. If it's some sucker shit, they gonna speak on it. They don't give. He he ain't care. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, but he's the motivation. He's why I'm able to just go so hard. Because it, when I'm moving, I'm thinking about him and I'm thinking about, damn, man, I gotta do this for the family. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, every time I think about him, I just turn it up even harder. But that was the push that had me push through this shit every day when I first came out the pen to now, you know? Yeah. So that, that, that's where it get down at. Lil Steve, for the, for the viewers that don't know, Lil Steve was your brother. That's my correct? big brother, yeah. Your big brother. Mm -hmm. What was, and I'm gonna ask you, <laughs> What was the last thing? Because I think we all remember something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember that with just some of my people that passed. What was the last thing you remember, Lil Steve, telling you before you? He was supposed to come see me in prison because I had a, we had just got permission for him to come see me because me and him was cellies and shit. You know what I mean? Because uh, we was in the penitentiary together, but he got Damn, two brothers in the same yeah, cell. Yeah, we was in the same cell. And uh, what happened was, I had to, I had to go through this stuff, get him on list, and I had a cell phone. So he had just got my number, so we was kicking. I'm in jail, we kicking. He's like, yeah, I'm going to come through, bro. Uh, I'm going to bring, my, bring your niece up there, all the nephew. All. I'm like, all right, cool. And then, then, you know, it was like a week later. And it was like, damn. You know what I mean? But, you know, that, that's, that, that's what really pushed me, helped me go to the next level. Yeah. You know what I mean? He really helped me turn, turn it up. Yeah. That day that you found that out, was that the day that you just, something ignited in you, and you was just like, yeah, was I'm fire. not fucking playing no more, I just, I, I, was, I knew it was real, because I had I had real responsibilities. You know, I got my nieces and nephews now, my grandma, you know my family, you dig what I'm saying? Yeah. So it just got, it just got real real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shit got extremely real. How was your upbringing at home, from Philly? Uh, it was, the upbringing, man, it was like every other upbringing anywhere, man. You're just trying to figure this shit out, man. You want to be down. You want to be accepted. It's just it's the same shit, man. You're trying to get some money. Yeah. I mean, you want the girls. Yeah. It was everybody shit. wanted some bitches. I don't yeah. give a fuck what type of man you. Would everybody wanted. You want I don't pussy. care if you even want them. You you want some bitches some at least pussy. jocking you, man. Yeah, you wanted some pussy. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what it was. You you wanted some. You wanted some of that. Yeah. Now, you. I, I noticed, man, because I, I watch your stuff, man, and I noticed, like, you always, every morning, like, you do, so, like, a, a motivational video. Like, you do something, you let people know, like, come on, man, get out of the gutter. Like, time is, is, is Turn it it's up. not going to come. Yeah, it's not going to come to your door. It's not going to come knocking on your door saying, hey, we heard you lived in the neighborhood. You got to get your ass up and go get I've watched you do these listen, videos man. in the rain. Sleet or snow. What drives you, Wallow, for real? Like, what drives your ass to get the fuck up and, like, just really, like, because obviously, like, you know, you, you don't just motivate yourself, but you try to motivate others. You know what it is? We always say we want help. I'll be the help that I always wanted when I was in the pen. 
And I just help others. You know what I mean? Help ain't something that you only think of when it's you. Help is to help is a is you know, is a goes both ways. I don't think a lot of people understand that, man. Yeah. It's deep. Do you feel like you've um you've helped more than you received? Oh, without a doubt. But if you, but when you're in the game of this, you ain't even trying. You're just trying to help. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you're in this game of uh, helping people and just yeah. pushing people, I make people think, think, laugh, and cry. Huh. And uh, when you're doing that, you ain't even thinking about it like that. Yeah. You know, you don't be thinking about it too much. You seem like a man that uh, definitely uses his second thought today. Uh. And you don't just jump in on something. Like, you ain't the type of person that, like, I don't feel like you react off the first first move now. You kind of sit back and evaluate Man, things do when it. happening. Because I'm older now, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm always thinking about, okay, how this going, you know? Like, you know, in this game of life, you got to really be understanding. And I think that my understanding has went to the to the moon because wherever you're saying something you don't like about me, wherever you disagree with me, whatever, I came to the part of my life where though I could understand that. Yeah. That you have a right not to agree with me. That you have a right not to like me. Yeah. That even if you even if you're not liking me and it's based off of hate, I I came to the point where I can understand where you at in life. Might don't agree with my success, so I'm cool with that. I can't be mad at you because you upset with your position in life, and I'm and I'm this far in my life, yeah. and I just came home from prison. So you know you got to be understanding of that. Yeah. And, and 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 I think that's what makes me a better person. You feel like you get more hate being on today versus when you did back in the day, just moving and just grooving? Without a doubt, uh, there's a lot of it, but I don't see it because I get way more love than it. The love supersedes all that shit. Yeah. So it'd be like, I don't see it. There's a lot of shit I just don't see. Sometimes people might try to bring stuff to my attention and uh, whatever, I'll be just be like, all right, cool. Yeah. They'd be like, cool, because uh, you got to think about this. You know? A lot of times, the people that's hating on you, they ain't, they, ain't, they ain't got nothing going on. Right. Because if I got time to take out of my day to be worrying about you all day, I ain't got shit going on yeah, in what life. What the fuck you really doing for you? We ain't, we ain't on the same level. Impossible. You know, most of the time, people that's haters, you don't see that your haters at the bank. You don't see them at the airport. No. You don't see them. You don't see them. Listen, on vacation. See them in the restaurants you eat with. Yeah. You don't see them in other places. Yeah. So you can't even entertain that shit. Yeah. Let, you let them do them. What do you think about, because I got to ask you, man, because it seems like you've really figured out, like, the algorithm to the internet. Like, you know, what do you feel like is is different with the opportunities that are here today versus they were 20 years ago? Man, you got that, you got the set. This is a satellite. This could take you anywhere in the planet. This is a spaceship. This is your private jet right here. So private jet. So my whole thing is like... <laughs> It ain't no excuses in the algorithm part. Facts. In order, in order to beat the algorithm, you just gotta post. See, the problem with people is everybody putting stuff up and they worrying about the numbers instead of worrying about who it impact. Yeah. It's gonna connect with the people you need to connect with. Right. You ever been a man, and I gotta ask you, man, from even back in the day, because mm. you come from back in the day, and, and seeing them, <laughs> them type of, these type of crisis motherfuckers getting high, you ever been a man that did drugs? I never did drugs in my life. My homies did drugs. Um, and I was like the dude that always used to get people home and stay on point. Never yeah. did a drug, bro. Never smoked a cigarette. Never drunk the beer. None of that stuff. Never. Never. Not one time in your life. Not, like, not, fuck it. I'm going to try with my homies. No. I had me a 40. I never, I, never, I never was entertained by it on the aspect. Like, I never thought it was because I used to see the reactions of the homies. I'm like, this nigga tripping. He's stripping out. This nigga <laughs> smoked some PCP. <laughs> he smoked some PCP. <laughs> what the fuck is he doing? I'm like, yo, right. put your clothes on, bro. So... Seeing shit, I was like, nah, oh, I ain't. Niggas get butt ass naked off that yeah, German the German Oh, do they? That's why they call it butt naked. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it'd be like, you know, that shit be crazy. Mm -hmm. Where, where do you want? Where are you trying to grow with your viewers? Where are you trying to take them? What's the the end goal from some of the things that, like you you preach to them and just what's the end goal? Where what are you trying to get your viewers to see? Because you have a lot. Only thing, only thing I want to get them to see is what they need. It's something I done put out there that they might need, and then it's something that they might don't. So uh, I'm just trying to be me a day, mm -hmm. be you know, be the best I could be, and just put that out there. Yeah. You want? Do you feel like you want people to override their needs 
and say, fuck the wants, get your needs out the way. Man, meet, your, meet your necessity. My whole thing is like this. When you think about it, it's like this. Do what you need to do so you can do what you want to do one day. And the only way you're going to do that is you got to secure your life as it is right now. You see what I'm saying? How are you going to take care of your family? How are you going to pay your bills? How you going to, you need money, you need operation money. Operation money is, is the money that you need to operate daily. Yeah. Your gas in your car, yeah. the lunch. You see what I'm saying? Right. If you don't have the gas, getting back to work, Uber, whatever, you know. Right. So how is you going to operate? Get your operating money, uh, get your living money, you know what I mean? Get your responsibility money, which be like your kids or whatever. Yeah. Focus on that, then one day you can turn up, but, but get that shit together first. Motherfuckers, you know, I, I talked to a, a certain man one time and he said that the, uh, shout out to Roy Douglas, he had told me one time, he said the average American household cannot afford a $400 emergency. That's bad. He said they cannot, the average American household cannot deal with a $400 emergency right and now. The pipe busts, let something happen, the plumber gotta come. They can't handle it. Yeah. What do you feel like? What do you feel like is wrong with America today? Because I, I see you drive, man. I love your drive. I love the strength that you bring to your platform. Not just even a million dollars worth of game. I'm talking about what Wallow does. What I've watched you do. Because I noticed that you, you've you interviewed rappers. You've inter interviewed famous people. You sit down with them. They're all smoking, drinking in the room. And you're always there just trying to ask the questions. But I noticed on your channel... You wake up every day with this drive, man. Mm -hmm. What the fuck in the mornings when you get up and both them fucking feet hit the floor, what drives you like that to get up and still push and mash, I always tell man? you, Lil Steve is the motivation. It can't be just, just like because, and I'll say this, it can't just be because you laid down and you rested enough for 20 years. Fuck that. It's something that drives you. No, no, it's about, it's crazy, but I know people is waiting for me. Yeah. There's a lot of people counting on me in the morning to come through for them. And they need that push. I done had people, man, be in my DM, man, you know. It's 559 or 603. Man, you ain't, what's up, man? You ain't putting nothing up yet. I know people waiting on me. I know they waiting need it. Waiting on you. They need it. They need this energy. And I'm going to be real. You don't charge them for nothing. I've never seen you, uh, when you post any of your mo your motivational moves, here's my cash app at the bottom. For what? I fucking hate that shit. I don't need I, to do I that. Hate that. I hate that. I, I hate a person that sits there and talks like, oh, I want to motivate you. I want to drive you. I want you to, you know, pick up on my game and soak my game. But, mm. oh, here's my cash app. Donate. No. If a motherfucker want to reach you, they going to reach you. I've never asked for nothing. You ain't got I've to. never asked like the word like or act like I mean need no man this is free game. I feel like this is game that everybody need to have. Major game. Common fucking sense. Yes, sir. Nobody has that anymore, Wallow. No. It seems like that being a being a real nigga or just fuck being a real nigga, being a real person has been something as it's it's out of style. Totally out of style. It's out of style to be somebody real. You know, it was always taught to me, man, never bite your tongue, that shit hurts. That shit hurts. To bite your tongue, you know. So when I watch a lot of motherfuckers sit here and like, you're not. Hey, look, man, I'm gonna be the best me I could possibly fucking be today, tomorrow. Fuck the bullshit, man. I don't you gotta be fuck. you. You got to be you, man. Mm -hmm. I, I I gotta know. Do people try to encourage you to be something else? Do people try to encourage you like, oh, leave what you thought you knew about jail? That's in your past, or leave what you knew about what you your mistakes. Leave those in the past, but it seems like to me your mistakes is what made you. Yeah. You know, uh, your mistakes is what made you who you are. At the end of the day, if you're gonna respect my glory, you gotta respect my story. You understand hmm. me? So I so I don't I don't even pay attention to that shit. That's where I come from. That's a part of the journey. You see what I'm saying? That's a part of the journey, the joint. Yeah. That's why I got my game up. That was my university. I wasn't in jail. I was in Yale. I wasn't in prison. I wasn't. I, I wasn't in prison. I was in Princeton. I wasn't in State Penn. I was in Penn State. So at the end of the day, that's why I got my game at. If you don't like what I'm, you know, what I'm talking about, you don't like me mentioning it. You ain't gotta follow me. I'm cool with it. I ain't mad at you. What right. you What you do? Ever, like you, you obviously you served a, a bit. What'd you do? Like, I'm curious. Like, what was programming with Wallow like? Like, what Man, you was know, your morning when you, you know, woke up? It switched up. Depends on where I was working at the time. Sometimes I was working in the morning. Sometimes I was working at night. So it depends on the working, you know? Yeah. 
I, you know, go to work, come back early at the child, because I always usually work in the kitchen. Yeah. Come back early, you know, go run, yeah. do some reading, different stuff. It'd be different stuff, but right. it's never the same every day. I heard you say something about uh, I hate that I'm working for forty cents when I know I'm giving them at least a dollar's worth of work. No, I said I said you gotta move the lock in your next move. I said when I was in prison, I used to work for nineteen cent. Uh -huh. But when I was in, working for nineteen cent, I was working like I was working for twenty four cent. When I got to twenty four cent, I was working like I worked at forty two cent. When I went went to forty two cent, I was working for a pay raise that didn't exist. You gotta move the lock in your next move. I'm just telling people, you really got to move the lock in your next Sharp move. Sure, motherfucker. I ain't worrying about. I ain't worrying about like me. I ain't worrying about a lot of persons. Be like, oh damn, man, I'm worrying about, you know, uh, I'm worrying about becoming a millionaire. My old things, nah. You know, I was worrying about when I get a couple of mil, how I'm, you know, flip that, turn it up to get more, or how I'm gonna turn my whole system up of what I'm doing to get more. Yeah. So that's what this shit is about at the end of the day. But Wallo, you and me both know everybody. We always say what we're gonna do when we get some money. Everybody mm -hmm. says, "Oh man, let me get two million. And they always hate on the next person too that's got the money. They always be like, "Oh man, if I would have had that money, this is what I would have done." I ain't seen nobody do it yet. <laughs> I, I I can't stand that. In the history that. of life, I never seen nobody do that shit. Everybody, yeah. everybody, quick to have a marketing plan and a budget for, and know how they break their money down, where it's going, this, this, this going when they ain't yeah. got it. Yeah, it's different when that when they shit get that shit. They sell they celebrate coming out the struggle, man. They got to go flex, get fly, shit on the motherfuckers to cross them. Yeah. It's a lot of shit you got to do. I'm gonna be real with you. I've been seeing you get money for a while now. I know you're getting bread, <laughs> and that's the first piece of jewelry other than the wallow chains that I've seen you have. You don't really like. You don't flex. No, I noticed that about, about you, and I know you get it. I yeah, know I don't you get bread. You, you've do done this. Yeah. I've never seen you like you don't flex. Like you don't buy the jewelry. You because don't I, buy I, the clothes. You know what? I ain't got to flex because it's like I'm getting this shit in real time. I'm really doing it right here. Yeah. I'm really doing some shit, man. Yeah. So, and I don't need, I don't need no illusions or I don't need no extra marketing. Yeah. I'm doing shit in real time, man. Yeah. I've never saw you like in the latest Louis. The latest. Oh, you, you never going to see me. You never going to see me. I've never. Like, and I'm not. And I, you're a nigga that gets bread. You're never going to see me in that shit because it's like. That's just not my thing. It's enough people that got that, that's utilizing yeah. that. Salute to them. Yeah. I just like my sweats, Adidas sweats, my T-shirts, my Yeezys. Do you feel like that's a way to keep the black society broke? What? People buying, like, because you know, it's always, I notice it's, I've, I've never really seen too many, and I got to say it, I've never seen too many white folks or Chinese folks or Mexican folks standing in line at the at the Louis Vuitton store. I see my people up in there blowing the bag. We we conditioned. You know what it is, Sharp? We conditioned because it's like this. We never really had shit. So when we get some money, that's just us celebrating the moment out of the struggle. It's like a celebration to people. Oh, shit, let me go get some credit. Let me get... Because motherfucker ain't never had nothing, man. Yeah. And it's a moment, you know? Like, you know, I guess people just like, man, I'm happy. I'm going to live this shit up. And I, I've been yeah. going through this shit. You know what I mean, people... You got adults that never had ten thousand dollars cash at one time in their life. I'll be quick to tell you how to go spend your ten. I've noticed that too. Though. Go quick to tell you how to go spend your hundred or your million. <laughs> you should be doing this. You should be, man. Come on, man. Yeah. What was the first thing that you did when you got some money? Like when they finally broke your ass off? Of you're like, fuck. Here's the check. They running it to me. I bought me, first I bought me some Adidas sweatpants, some more. <laughs> <laughs> you mean? I ain't gonna hold you. I bought like 15 pairs. Real nigga shit. <laughs> I said, this is fuck up now. I'm ready to turn it up. Yeah. I'm gonna reload my shit because some of my joints get little holes and shit. You can't see them. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I'm gonna I'm stir it up. So I'm gonna turn the fuck you up. You still wear the holy ones? Oh, yeah, I got a bunch of them. Yeah, I wear that shit. I don't even give a fuck no more. <laughs> I'm at a place now where it don't even matter. It really don't. It really mm -hmm. don't. I get money, bro, and I wear black jeans, white jeans, blue jeans. That's it. Same color. Hey, it can look like the same <laughs> jean. That's, and I don't really, like, to me, motherfuckers be like, oh, Sharp, you know, why aren't you going to buy the McQueen? Or why aren't you going to buy the Louis? I came from level one. I've had that shit. 
Yeah. I had that shit for many years. I already them blew mm -hmm. hella traps on that shit or I done blew hella bankrolls. That's not what I'm in it for anymore. I'd rather wear a gray t-shirt like this and sit with a no jumper sweatshirt yeah. next to me or something. I don't need all that extra shit to be me. That's why I don't go buy a bunch of Cubans or go buy a bunch of mm -hmm. bullshit because that's not what I need. I don't I don't mm -hmm. need that. Now, do I want that? Cool. Okay. Everybody wants something. Hell, there's motherfuckers that want Learjets. Yeah, but need. You, you understand the word need. I understand the word need because you know what? I know what it's like to go blow 20,000 be broke tomorrow with a whole bunch of designer on it's not That's a real right. good it's not a good feeling fellas it's not a good it's feeling man, to sit there and have on a whole bunch of designer and I can't even pay to walk in here to go have me a cocktail that's crazy. A lot of motherfuckers do it, man. They walk outside. You got $2,000 sneakers on. You got a $1,000 pair of jeans. You got a, you know, a $2,500 cardigan on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you can't even, you telling the person at the door at the club, man, it's, it's, that's expensive $40 to get in. I'd rather live. I've always tried to tell people, Wallo, to live within your means. Yeah, what's that? Whatever that is. I was, and to, and to me, Living within your means is okay. If you got fifty thousand, does that mean that you go buy you a fifty thousand dollar car? No. People do it every fucking day. You and I both know it. They get fifty thousand dollars. Now I'm gonna go buy them a car that costs forty two thousand. To me, I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I'd rather go buy me a nice, dependable car to get me from A to B versus me going and blowing fifty thousand dollars. Drive me a nice car. I still owe a payment on probably. Pull up to the club in valet for people not even to see it and to go downstairs. I pull it for two seconds. You get two seconds of shine. That's what you. That's what people buy cars for like that. It's to be seen. Damn. It's to be seen. But you have to think about it, man. You pull up to the club for two seconds. They don't even see you. Valet takes the car and takes it downstairs. Yeah, especially if they you're not even. Nobody even saw what you pulled up in. Yeah, you better. You get. You hoping they pull it out for the let out. When they, they get you like, where my car? You trying that shit as it's coming out. All that so you pull money. Out, pull off his flex. So it sounds like to me, coming and going, all that money for maybe a hard eight seconds. Got to make it make sense to me, loved one. All that, man, I'm not saying, I, man, I've had Aston Martins, old school, I've had all that shit. Yeah. But it's, it's I'm going to be real, bro, that's never gotten me nowhere than how I get me somewhere. Say no more. Because I, I feel like I can have the same type of position, the same type of thing happen to me. Results. Walking up on a motherfucker. Yep. Or pulling up on a motherfucker. It doesn't really matter. It's how you present yourself. Yes, sir. I like the way that you present yourself, Wallo, and I like what you stand for, man. And the people need to know, they already know who the fuck you are, but I want them to know who Wallo is before all this. Is he still the same man that he was, or did money change him? Did money change you? Money bring you a lot of motherfucking problems. Money is a headache. Uh, money make people change. Because people start asking you for shit they never asked you for before. And they start putting all this responsibility on you when the title may come out. Money make people entitled to shit. So I'm out of nowhere, so I'm not gonna say money changed me. Yeah. Money changed a lot of people I know. Based off of how they how they might feel that they might utilize me. Yeah. So that's that's how I look at that. You feel like you've lost good relationships behind man, money? Man, it's lonely at the top, man. Hey, they say it's lonely at the bottom too. Yeah, but that time was a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> they say it's lonely at the bottom too, loved one. Shit. I mean, I was lonely at the bottom and shit. I'm lonely yeah. at the top. So it sounds like we just going to be some lonely motherfuckers. It's lonely. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> you're going to let a lot of people go on your journey when you start leveling up because everybody's not going to be happy for you. Was there any relationships that you felt like you had to let go over that might have, you know, hurt you a bit? Yeah, you know, you had them little ones here and there, but it's like you can't, you can't, man, you got to keep fucking going in order. Your operation, you got to keep moving mm -hmm. if you get caught up in a debate and they're trying to battle with somebody that don't that you don't need in your life or whatever no nah, you ain't got no argument slice yeah. and dice i've always i used to be a person right while on out i don't know if you was like this but i was like this and um i always used to like everything was a problem everything was a problem like See? i used to have a problem with they, everything you argue everything. you are you argumentative and you problematic I, I i used to have a problem with just even little problems trip it's, 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 i used to have 
like I used to have a problem with just little problems. And I noticed how much energy he used to take from me. The energy mm-hmm. I would put into it, worried about yep. something that I possibly can't even control. Yep. I always learned, and this is a long story short on it. I save my energy for real problems because you're going to have sure. problems in your life, loved one. I don't give a fuck. Problems come every day. Problems are going to present themselves. But it's the problems that you entertain is what's important. I don't entertain small shit because you know why? I know I got to save this for the big fish. Yeah, I need my energy. It's going to be some real shit that's going to come that I don't need to crack under pressure Yes, over. sir. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to crack under pressure over that. So I just rather the little problems with somebody saying they got a problem with me. Okay, cool. It ain't about nothing. You got a it, problem with you. It, it's, it's, you, gotta, you got to have a problem with mm-hmm. you, you know? And like the, the way I move, loved one, I feel like me and you move a lot alike. Yes, sir. We stay focused and we don't look behind us. I don't look, I don't really look in the rear view. For what? There's no need. There's nothing For back what? there. There's nothing, listen to me, man. There's nothing back there. There's nothing back there to me. For me to go looking back and me sitting there saying, oh, well, you know, can I try to pull this forward? No. I let that shit go, even if it hurts me. You know, Rich, man, you know, I said, uh, this dude that I used to know, man, Persian Cat, right out of San Diego, man. Uh, shout out to Roman um, on European Collections. And um, he's always have all these fly-ass cars, man. <laughs> and I used to tell the nigga. He was getting Because he, he was getting it. Like, he always used to drive these cars, but he would sell them. Like, if somebody came and offered him the money, he would sell them. And I, used to, I asked him one time, man, we was on PB. We was at a uh, fucking uh, Bar West. And he pulled up in a candy red Tundra on 30s with the Sean Taylor nigga on the back as a mural. He had just Damn. passed away, the Washington Redskins dude. Yeah. He had just passed away. And uh, I asked him, I said, man, yeah, he was sitting on 30s, man. So when 30s just came out, I told him, I said, bro, why don't you ever keep any of these, man? Because he, he, he taught me something very valuable. He told me, Wallow, he says, never get too attached to things. Everything can go. <sighs> he told me, church, never get too attached to things. Everything for sale. Everything's for sale. Everything in life. You know, so I kind of took that into consideration like, okay, well, let me not take everything can go. Let me not act like everything's here to stay. Yeah. Hell, this podcast can go. Your shit can go. Everything can go. Everything can go. You have to always keep that on your mind. I feel like that's what makes you grind harder. Yep. You drop it, keep going. Drop it and fucking drop keep it, going. Drop it, keep going. I got this jumping, drop it and keep going. What did they, I'm going to ask you, man, you know what I'm saying? What did they, uh, the recession proof convention what does that entail to? What was the reason of bringing all these black entrepreneurs and people that are just, it's a pr- pretty much to me, it's a lot of black folks that's getting money coming together. Yeah, getting coming together and putting game on people that don't got the game so they can win. You know, you got people in different fields. You got people in truck and event space, Amazon selling, Toro. You got people in all these different spaces, business credit, insurance, how to leverage your insurance. You got all these different people. So, you know, it, it just it's just great. You're talking about Amazon. I'm thinking about who owns that? Jeff Bezos? Yeah. Jeff Bezos owns Amazon. I've never watched, I don't know, maybe, maybe I, I never understood a motherfucker that's really getting bread. This motherfucker wanted, he went to the moon, I think it was, didn't he? Didn't yeah, he did he? A, he a went right, to space somewhere. Who the fuck gets money? Who spends their money and does something like because that? Because you've done, you, you done anything else already. <laughs> got all the money you bought, whatever. You got all electronic houses and shit. Yeah. You know, computer driven, how all type of shit. Gave fucking Van Jones a hundred million. Mm-hmm. Gave Van from CNN. He don't even work there no more. Gave that man a hundred million dollars and told him, man, do whatever fuck you want to do with that shit. That's get, major. Get who? I wish I can get a hundred million dollars. You ever had somebody just hand you a hundred? Like tell you to, not because nothing that you they you owe them. You owe them no services. Hundred million fucking dollars, Walla. Like who the fuck? Like I'm I'm being real. Like who? Just gives out that kind of money, man. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. Somebody gonna give it to me. Do you feel like you up next for a hundred million? Without a doubt, somebody gonna give it to me, and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna take care of a lot of communities. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna take care of a lot of communities. Yeah, I, I want you, hey man. I just want to, hey, want you to know, I appreciate you 
for Appreciate coming. You, you know what I'm saying? I know it's getting late for you. I know you got to yeah. get up early in the morning, you know? <laughs> and for you just, I, I know like you it. got things to do in the morning. I don't want to hold you too That's long. It. You know, I appreciate you for coming. Yeah. I hope that, you know, I can get another joint with you in the future. Yes, sir. We can sit down. Can hey, man, if you ever want me to come over there and turn the fuck up on million dollars worth no of more. game, because I ain't going to be yawning. We're going to be over there balling. Yes, sir. I'm throwing money in there when I come on this motherfucker. Damn, we see something. <laughs> you see what we was doing with, uh, uh, Bobby Smurda, he's in this snap. Oh my God, y'all was snapping. <laughs> Bobby, <laughs> was, you, got, you got to bring that energy, man. Hey, I appreciate you for bringing no problem, man. you and bringing you. your truth, you know, and just coming and sitting down with me for a few minutes. Church. You got to on a sharp tank, you know what I mean? No jumper, baby. <laughs> Sharpest, coolest podcast in the world. Coolest podcast in the world, man. Thanks for coming. Hey, Much man, love, bro. The sharp tank, no jumper. Sharpest, coolest podcast in, in the, the world. Fucking world. In the world, Let's baby. Let's talk about that shit, man. Vegas edition, baby. Vegas and we edition. We out this motherfucker. Trev, shoot us the fuck about the gym.